Hi everyone, happy new year. Another workout for you. Um, pretty traditional, so I hope you enjoy. You're gonna start in a kneeling position and stack your ribs over top of your pelvis and wrap your hands around the highest point of your rib cage, just underneath your chest. And start by taking big inhales and big exhales. And give yourself a little bit of resistance. This is a great way to stretch your diaphragm. If sitting like this isn't comfortable, go ahead and sit in any way that is comfortable. Deep inhale through the nose. Deep exhale through the mouth. Focusing on how your ribs move with your hands beside them. Okay, about one more. Inhale through the nose and then exhale through the mouth. Lower the arms and then keeping the ribs still, lift your arms up towards the ceiling. Pull your ribs down as the arms lift and then press back down. So this is subtle, but pay close attention to what your spine does and what your ribs do when you lift your arms overhead. So can you truly honestly lift your arms up without your rib cage lifting? Then start to circle your arms with the same concept in mind. If you're not sure, look in the mirror, watch yourself from the side. Okay, and then go ahead and reverse, go the other direction. Notice if your head shears forward or back as you move your arms. Keep it nice and still. Nothing moves but your arms inside the sockets. Lower the left hand to the mat and side bend up and over. Feeling a stretch to the right side of the body, lift the arms and side bend up and over to the left, excuse me, to the right. Same thing, other side. Create length through your spine and then twist and rotate and then open the chest. Same thing in, rotate your sternum towards the left and then open to center. Restack, lift the arms, lower the right and then twist and rotate towards the ground and then back up. So this might create a little bit of a stretch through the side of your lower back. Lift both arms up to the ceiling, lower the arms down, swing your legs around, make sure there's lots of space behind you, and then roll all the way down onto your back. We're gonna go into our hundreds next, bend your knees, bring them in towards your chest, curl the head, neck, shoulders up, start to pump your arms, Either straighten your legs or keep your knees bent in tabletop with your knees directly on top of your hips. Pump your arms vigorously, breathing in through the nose, out through the mouth. A few things you wanna make sure that you're doing is that your back is not arching. You're maintaining a neutral position. I always feel it helpful if I feel I'm losing the connection to go ahead and bend my knees back in. Keep pumping those arms, keep breathing deeply. You're in the final stages. Breathing in through the nose, deep exhale through the mouth, widening the collarbones, pointing those toes. Last breath, bend your knees, hug your knees to your chest, lower the head for a moment, and then rock yourself up to a seated position with your feet planted firmly, hands behind the back of the knees, round your upper spine forward. On your next exhale, round your lower back, roll back until your arms are straight and then round forward. So in your mind, you wanna think about your lower back connecting to the mat as you rock back and forth. Tuck the tail, feel your core brace. And keeping your gaze absolutely still, hold this one. And then lift your arms and lower them, just like you did when you were on your knees, lifting up, lowering back down. Okay, then grab the back of the thighs, rock forward, rock back again, reset your position, and then go into your arm circles. Nothing moves but the arms. Again, same thing you did when you're in a neutral spine earlier. Round forward, rock back, reverse your circle. Side, up, and forward and down. Okay, a lot of work here. And then lower your hands to the thighs, round forward. Rock back one last time. And then slowly roll down for four. All the way down for three, two, one. Full roll up. Arms reach back at a 45 degree angle. Feet are hard flexed as you round forward, reach forward towards your toes. 
Like you just did before, tuck the tail, roll down onto your back. Lift the arms 45 degrees, keep the ribs connected. So you'll see we're making the same shapes with your body in a way, but our relationship to gravity is changing. So you've lifted your arms overhead in many shapes already throughout the session, five minutes in. But now can you keep your ribs pulling down as your arms go back? A few more times, rounding forward and rolling back. And nod that chin, round forward, reach. Roll all the way back down. And then lower your arms down to the mat. One leg circle. Bend your right knee, straighten the leg up towards the ceiling, and then bring the leg across, down and around and up. Keep your left foot flexed, digging the heel into the ground so that leg doesn't roll around. Pause at the top, curl the head, neck, shoulders up, hover your arms and hover your legs, and then reverse your circle. A lot of stability here. You might feel some enormous twisting. You might see some enormous twisting. Modify the size of your circle as you need. Last one, lower the head, lower the leg. Flex your right foot, point your left toes, lift that leg up to the ceiling, and then across, down, and round, and up. So same thing here with your ribs. Keep pulling them down to the mat. Keep your core engaged and press your arms into the mat. Then curl the head, neck, shoulders up, hover your arms and leg, and then reverse your circle. Keep your breath going through your body. Okay, one or two more. Notice which side was more challenging. Okay, lower the leg, curl even higher, and then lower the head. All right, curl the head, neck, shoulders up, bend your knees into your chest and straighten your legs to the ceiling. Lower one leg and then reach your fingertips to tap together, one on either side of the leg. And then switch over to the other side. Attempt to not touch your thigh. So this is a scissor variation, kind of taking things out of order a little bit if you know the traditional order. So you reach and curl, tap your fingers, switch. Reach and curl, tap your fingers, switch. Keep your legs as straight as you possibly can and keep your shoulders square, belly button in line with your sternum, lower the head down. Then rock yourself up to a seated position and we'll go into rolling like a ball. Grab your ankles or your shins, pull your shins in tightly and bring your gaze down. Rock to the shoulder blades and then come back up. So lift the hips to rock back and curl the head, neck and shoulders to roll back up like you're doing a full roll up with your upper body, if that makes any sense. So you're not just relying solely on momentum, you're making your body in this tight, compact position and using your core to rock back and core to rock up. Then from there, extend the legs to tabletop and lengthen your spine, keep the lower back round and slowly roll down for single leg stretch. Hug right knee in, extend left leg long and switch on your exhale. Give your legs intention and purpose. It is called single leg stretch. So pull those legs away from one another. Pulling your knee towards your nose and getting the shoulder blades off of the mat. Okay, and then when you're even, bring the knees in for double leg stretch. Just lower your head, take a moment to recollect. Curl up. And then as you breathe in, extend the arms and legs. Exhale, circle, empty your lungs out. And again, inhale as you reach. Exhale, yes. And keep going until you're completely empty, 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 empty. And again, inhale, exhale out. A few more times. Okay, making sure your back does not arch when you extend the legs long. And then from there, lower the head. Hands go behind your head. Curl head, neck, shoulders up and straighten your legs to the ceiling. Lower your legs down for a count of three and then lift them back up. Same thing, notice your lower back. Also notice where your eyes are. Are you curling up high enough so that you can stare at your pubic bone and your belly button? Bend the knees for crisscross, straighten the left leg, twist to the right. 
Really open the shoulders wide to the side. Twist and open the elbows apart from one another. And then now that you've nailed that, start to flow coming across. Be as wide and as expansive as you can in this twist. Exhale across and twist, across and twist. Keep going, even though it burns. This is the final push. Okay, and then once you're even, curl a little higher, lower the head down, straighten your legs, lift your arms. And we'll do a full roll up to transition to a seated position. And then from there, just scoot back, separate your legs about shoulder distance apart and reach your arms straight ahead, shoulder height, breathe in, and then exhale, start to round your spine forward, bringing your head down between your knees, but in opposition, pull your waist, pull your belly button to your spine. And then again, exhale, you lift your back ribs up, going into our spine stretch forward. It's really important that you're able to achieve a straight spine before you reach forward. So sometimes bending your knees a little bit is super important or sitting yourself up on something if you've got tight hip flexors or hamstrings. Don't be shy to take that variation. You'll benefit from the exercise a lot more. Okay, a few more times. So remember, it's just as important to pull your waist back as you bring the head forward. So you should feel work through your core Stretch through your spine and stretch through your legs. And lower the hands down. And we're gonna to transition to an open leg rocker prep. So you're gonna roll back off your sit bones and then bend your knees with just your tippy toes. Then you're gonna reach up and grab your right ankle or shin. Reach up, grab left ankle or shin. And then try to balance and grab both ankles. Okay, and then alternate. You're going to left first and then right. So you'll see I'm trying to keep my lower back round, but my chest and shoulders open. So it's very similar to your teaser spine. This is a great way to teach your body how to get into this open leg rocker position. Hold the position and then close and open your legs. You do not have to have straight legs for this if you can't achieve that. The knees can be bent and you can grab the back of your thighs. Reach your arms up to the ceiling and then try to do the same thing with the, out, the assistance of your arms. So you're really in this teaser position, opening and closing the legs, and then bend the knees, straighten your legs, and just round forward for a second. Not easy. Roll all the way down onto your back. Then from there, bend your knees into your chest, straighten your legs up to the ceiling for a corkscrew variation. You're gonna send the legs down to the right, up, circle around and up. So down to the left, draw a circle, so you're not gonna lift your hips in this corkscrew variation. You're bringing your legs from one side, circle them down to the other side. Your shoulders and your lower back stay in the mat as you swing your legs around. Keeping the arms pressing down, the head pressing down, and the waist and ribs pulling down. Then bend your knees into your chest, grab a hold of your shins, curl up, and then do a few rolling like a balls just to come up to a seated position. Okay, last one. And then go ahead, extend your legs. Feet are flexed, shoulder distance apart for saw. Reach your arms to the side, twist. Reach pinky toe to pinky finger, roll up, come back to center. Other side, sorry, it should be pinky finger towards pinky toe. And then roll back up and center. Very similar to your spine stretch forward, but now you're adding rotation. Keep your hips planted firmly on the mat. And out of the corner of your eye, watch that your legs are staying the same length. There'll be a tendency to push one of your feet forward. And that's an indication that you're twisting through your hips. Come back to center, lower your arms down. All right, from there, just swing your legs around and we'll go into a few simple cat stretches. Point the toes, bring the knees and hands underneath their joints and then round your spine and then lengthen back out, pressing down firmly into the hands, never allowing the belly to sag and the lower back to sink. Exhale as you round, inhale to hold, and then lengthen back out. Finding a little bit of extension through the spine and then same thing, flexion through the spine, stretching the lower back, push down and start to sit back towards the heels and then come onto your stomach for a swan variation. Today, the legs will be zipped together the hands right underneath your forehead. Breathe in, tighten the corset around the waist, lift your chest and head up. 
and then lower yourself back down. And then again, inhale, exhale to lift up and hold for a brief second. Widen the collarbones in the chest and pull the pubic bone into the mat. Make sure your abdominals seem active and you press the tops of your legs into the mat. Lowering back down. Don't expect a lot of height here. You wanna feel the work through your upper and mid back. Good, and then let's do this again, lifting up and lowering back down. And then you hold up on the next one and you do little pulses up and down. Lift, lower, lift, lower. Make sure the work is concentrated on your upper back. Do about eight or 10 and then lower everything down. So next we're gonna do a breaststroke variation. Separate your feet, lift your chest, straighten your arms and circle them out and around to your hips. Bend your elbows, dive and reach forward and then circle your arms to your hips. And when you circle your arms to your hips, try to lift your chest a little higher and then make sure that you keep the neck long and the feet pressing down, the pubic bone pressing down. Diving forward and lifting up. Diving, reach forward, inhale as you lift up. Lower everything to the mat and then round back into a child's pose for a few breaths just to neutralize the spine. Giving the back just a bit of a stretch and then come onto your stomach again, but prop yourself up onto your forearm for single leg kick. Feet are hip distance apart, press down into your forearms and lift up the waist. Bend your right knee, kick your seat twice and switch to the other side. So what I find helpful to tell my body to do is as I bend my knee, I tell my kneecap to lift. Okay, you wanna keep your pubic bone really drilling into the mat so that your lower back isn't feeling this. If you are feeling that, try this with your head and chest down and just practice the leg portion. It's a very technical exercise. Then lower everything down and sit back to a child's pose. Okay, feeling a stretch through your lower back. Taking a few breaths here. Then we're gonna go into a forearm plank. Lower the forearms down. Step your feet back one at a time and we'll have the feet together. Your shoulders are stacked right over the elbows and we're gonna pull ourselves forward with our arms and push ourselves back. So that way it's just more than just a normal ordinary forearm plank. You are getting articulation through those feet, through all 10 toe joints. And really try to get that. If you peek up and look at my feet, I'm really, really trying to stretch my feet and bend at my toe joints as I do this rocking forward and back action. Then turn your toes to one side and sit down. You're gonna lower yourself all the way onto your side and move your feet forward. So you're in a shallow L shape, side kick. You do two kicks forward, and then two kicks back. You'll notice I have my hands behind my head, but you can also take your top hand and place it in front of your waist. The goal is to keep the body as still as possible. Two kicks forward, two kicks back. Your leg will be able to go further forward than it is able to go back. Keep that in mind. And we'll do about eight of these. Two kicks forward, two kicks back. Then you're gonna flex the foot, hover it over top of the bottom leg, and then you're gonna lift, lift, lift. Lower, lower, lower. Okay, as you lift your leg, your pelvis and your waistline doesn't sink into the mat as a result. So the movement is truly at the side of the seat. And then you're gonna go into leg circles. About five or six in one direction. Favoring the back, and then five or six in the other direction. Keeping the pelvis quiet and still, bottom leg with energy. Then bend your top knee, grab your ankle and put it on the floor. Straighten your bottom leg, lift it up and draw eight circles with that leg. Keep the foot flexed, the knees and toes pointing straight ahead. After you've done eight, reverse it. You should feel this in the bottom inner thigh. Subtle contraction. Then push up for mermaid, bend your knees, grab your ankle, lift the arm up to the ceiling, create length through your spine and then bend towards your legs. Feel yourself pull with your right arm, bring the left hand behind your head. And then let's go back to our forearm plank. So another shot, another chance, the whole sequence. 
Start to push yourself forward and back. Careful that you're not letting your hips lift up higher than your shoulders. And also that you're not too round through the upper spine or sinking through the shoulder blades. Okay, then turn your toes to one side. Sit down on your side. Move your feet slightly forward, lower all the way down. Hands behind your head or your top hand in front of your waist, your choice. Float your leg up, kick it forward twice, and kick it back twice. I'm a little slow with my cues. Kick forward, and then two kicks back. Kick, kick front, kick, kick back. Keeping your whole upper body so still. You'll notice it wants to swing in opposition to where your leg is going. Avoid that. We have about eight or 10 of these, depending on how much you think you did on the first side. I did eight. Okay, then hover your leg, flex the foot, lift and lower, up, 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 down, down, down. Make a lot of muscle tone through your legs as you lift and lower. Up, 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 down, down, down. Then point your foot and then draw circles with your leg, about five or six, keeping everything still and quiet. And then reverse it. Grab your ankle, put the foot in front of the waist, flex your bottom foot, lift it up, and then circle that leg eight times. Check in with your posture. Make sure the chest and shoulders are still open, the abdominals are still drawing in. And after you've done eight, reverse your direction. Then from there, bend your knees, push yourself up to a seated position, grab your ankle for a mermaid stretch, lift the arm, get a little longer before you bend up and over to the side. Take the hand, place it behind the head and breathe, increasing the stretch, increasing the bend, increasing the length. All right, now this is a great prep for a reformer exercise. Um, well, it's on a lot of different apparatus apparatuses. So you're going to sit on your sit bones and circle your arms a few times like you did earlier. Really trying to find range of motion. Then place your hands behind you, fingertips forward. You're going to lift your hips up a little. And then you're going to bend your elbows and straighten your elbows. So your hips are actually quite low and you're trying to get as much weight as you can into your arms. Note that your hands are painting forwards or sideways, never backwards. So this is like our long back stretch. Then you're gonna do a little pulses down and see if you can shift more weight back into your hands. See if you can open your chest and shoulders a bit more. And this is also a great prep for leg pull front, an advanced Pilates exercise on the mat. Straighten your legs and reach forward towards your toes for a second before you roll all the way down onto your back. All right, teaser. Today, bend your knees into your chest, straighten your legs on a 45 degree angle, and then you're gonna reach forward towards your toes, hold, and then roll down just to the bottom tips of the shoulder blades before you roll back up again. I find it super helpful to match the angle of my legs with my arms. Do this once more, we'll do three in a row. Before you bend your knees into your chest, lift your arms back. We do the same thing again. Extend arms and legs at 45, roll up. Inhale, exhale, roll down to shoulder blades, roll back up. Your waist needs to be the first things to pull to the mat. Use your glutes, use your core. Once more. And then roll down. Bend your knees, lower the head. The second one's always the best. The third is the worst, so here we go. Curl, roll up, breathe in. Exhale, roll, roll, roll. And up, up, up. And two. Last one. And then roll all the way down onto your back. Bend your knees, hug them into your chest. Swimming, flip onto your stomach. Straighten your arms. Have your arms be as wide as your mat and your feet as wide as your hips. Lift everything up off the mat and start to flutter your arms and legs in opposition. Curl your pubic bone into the mat, really never arching your back. Don't let the shape of my body deceive you. I'm really, really pulling my abdominals in and almost thinking about rounding my lower back into the mat, although impossible. 
Keep breathing in through the nose, out through the mouth as you flutter those arms. Reach everything for a second and then sit back to child's pose. Thigh stretch. Just got one more exercise for you guys. So come up onto your knees. Straighten your arms to the ceiling and press your hips forward. Create a long line and lean back at the knees, lowering the arms down and lift back up. So your earlobe is in line with the middle of your shoulder, which is in line with the center of your hip, which is in line with the center of your knee. For this entire exercise, you're leaning back as far as you're able to without going into a back bend. Feeling a stretch through the front of the thighs and work through the back of your legs. If you're getting cramps through your feet, you might need to stretch your feet out a bit more regularly. Sit onto your heels, we'll finish the way we started. Hands around your ribs, breathe in. And then exhale out. Are you able to breathe wider? Has all of this work in rotation, flexion, extension, given you the ability to breathe wider? Then lift your arms to the ceiling, twist towards the right. Lift arms to the ceiling, press your arms down and twist to the left. Inhale up. And then exhale, twist, really pull your arms apart from one another. Very similar to our stomach massage twist on the reformer. Inhale up. And if that means nothing to you, just ignore it. Just feel this beautiful twist through your spine. All right, come all the way up. Feel a little extra length and then relax your arms. You are done. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you have a happy, happy new year and you enjoy these workouts and I'll continue to put them out as often as I can. Happy Sunday.